to that story that's grabbing the entire nation's attention. Fox 31, the first to obtain these videos of alleged gang activity at Aurora apartment complexes. Mayor Mike Kaufman telling Fox News gangs have pushed out property management through intimidation and are collecting rent. It's really like being held hostage. Cindy was a prisoner in her own home. She's lived in this building at 12th and Dallas for years. This summer, when crime got worse, Cindy got cameras. Doorbell video shows a group of armed men forcing their way into her neighbor's home. They will call me and say, I'm sorry, but we're not coming. We're not coming until it's a bad enough crime. Alleged gang member Bernardo Raul Mata recently confessing to police that gang members are being instructed to shoot police officers. Oh, this is coming to a town near you. This is definitely coming to a town near you. And for those of you who think it's not, you're wrong. Hello everyone, my name is Rogan and this is This Bohemian Gal. On my platform, I do social commentary and reaction videos. I encourage my audience to have private conversations in public. So there are multiple reports from residents in Aurora, Colorado, uh, saying that Venezuelan gangs have taken over an apartment complex building, forcing residents out, threatening them, shaking them down. And for weeks now, many officials, high-ranking officials in Colorado were saying that this is just not true. This is hyperbolic. People are making things up. I believe the governor of Colorado, Jared Polis, said it was basically, you know, the figment of someone's imagination that none of this was happening. Well, national security has now confirmed that those individuals that you see inside of the video toting weapons at that apartment complex are in fact gang members, members of the TDA, the Tren de Aragua. And all of the people who were denying this, saying that people were exaggerating, being hyperbolic, running out basically, they look like fools. They have eggs on their faces. So we're going to talk about this today because you have these residents in Aurora who are taking to social media over and over because they are not getting the results or they weren't until it started getting national attention. They weren't getting the results on the local level from their officials, from police officers. Police weren't taking it seriously. And so they were dealing with uh, living in fear, not being able to take their children to parks, not being able to go outside, not being able to live in peace because of these thugs. The crazy thing to me is, and you know, we always talk about social media being so bad, right? And social media can be a cesspool, but I always maintain that social media really does have some strong points. And the strong point is that had there not be an alternative, if there weren't an alternative for people to voice their frustrations, to talk about issues that are going on in their community by just being able to pick up their cell phones and record a video and, and blast it out to the world, a lot of us wouldn't have known about what was going on in Aurora. I'm not in Aurora. A lot of you aren't. And we wouldn't have known about these um, these thugs, these gang members uh, shaking down residents or basically breaking into their homes with weapons. I mean, if you look at the video, this is like, this is so mind blowing and so scary at the same time. Imagine you had a, a ring. What do you call those? The ring monitor on your door, on your doorbell, and you're seeing this stuff and you're to work. How terrifying must that be? have been for the individual who was now watching this on their phone how terrifying is it for the other residents who are in there with their children a lot of people are single parents inside that building and you're seeing these guys coming up the stairs and then you call the police and there's nothing being done or you have your governor basically saying it's a figment of your imagination as if you're stupid they left us there to die this week her pleas for help were finally answered not by the city, but by Councilwoman Danielle Jarinski. I think that politics is being played here with people's lives. While APD and the city denied gang activity, Jarinski moved Cindy out of that apartment herself. For weeks, officers have told her Sometimes. their hands were tied. What I am told is that police leadership put it out that no less than like three or four officers could respond to one of these complexes. I now have other property owners, other apartment complexes calling and telling me the same kinds of things. Food is the biggest commodity over there. Cindy says she survived the ordeal by staying quiet, giving them food and bed bug spray every night, praying she'd hear sirens. So social media has definitely played its role in making this go viral because had it not gone viral and gotten the attention that it got, this would have been swept under the rug. And I am of the firm belief that the reason why this is being downplayed so much is because we are in an election year, because Colorado is a blue state, because there is this protection over illegal immigrants 
who have broken the law by entering this country. Let's call a spade a spade and stop being so politically correct about these things that we do so to our detriment. You have law-abiding citizens and residents in that state of Colorado who are being terrorized. They are petrified to go outside their homes. It was reported by many people that these gang members have seized multiple complexes. Now, the building that you're seeing on the screen over here, apparently everybody was removed and there was um, a gate, uh, a fence put up to block people from going in there. But let me tell you something about gangs. They like roaches. So you can close off one place all you want. It's not like they're gonna be like, well, that was fun, let me go get a job. They're just going to move to another building and another building. So if you don't keep the pressure on these gangs, to get out of this area or to, to arrest these people if you catch them in, engaged in wrongdoing, they're only going to move to another territory. And this is why I say for those individuals who think that, oh, this is all the way in Colorado, it never come here, or I don't have to worry about that, you better think about the border crisis. I always think about how people smugly sat back when Texas and California were going through like the worst times. And let's talk about Texas because its governor was constantly talking about the need to shore up the border, to secure the border um, because they had so, an, an influx of immigrants coming in and they were causing problems. There are people in New York, there are people in Washington, DC, there were people all over who were like, oh, well, that's not our problem. Oh, Texas needs to be a little bit more sympathetic. Texas needs to be a little bit more sympathetic. Oh, you're doing this to the people who are fleeing for their homelands because they're in such dire straits and they just want an opportunity. Okay, easy to say when the person ain't inf infiltrating your house, when they're not infiltrating your home. But the minute they started being bused to these sanctuary cities, these other, other cities other than Tex Texas, then you saw a change in attitude. It was like, oh, we got to get them out of here. They running over the place and they da 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 da. Oh, now you get it. So, don't sit back wherever you are and think that what's happening in Aurora is not coming to your neighborhood because darling, it is. Child, let's take a listen to some of the TikToks of um, people who are speaking out about this. How is it that the government gets calls about it, the mayor gets calls about it, the cops gets called about it, everybody they mama that has a badge does not want to touch this group with a 10 foot cattle prod. This tells me somebody signed off on this. Somebody said, okay, you can go to Aurora and do this and ain't nobody going to really be none the wiser because I guarantee you if it was any other group doing that in Aurora, best believe they would have had 500 SWAT trucks in an hour. I am also questioning how these individuals were allowed to run rampant and police were notified time and time and time again, unless they are afraid. And if they are afraid, there are... There are um, um, there are people they could call for backup. They don't have to be afraid in their own city if they're afraid to go up against against these gangs. But you don't just kind of fold your arms when people are calling saying they're petrified. And I feel like whoever is heading up their their police um, um, uh, squad or division or whatever you call it, um, they need to be held to account because there's no way the people who are paying your salary, the civilians should be living in fear in their own town. This whole Venezuelan gang thing is a bigger deal than they're making it because I just heard about this shit this week that's happening in Colorado. But I just saw a video from the 18th, that's damn near two weeks ago, that's happening in some in New York, the police officers getting shot and And then I'm hearing that this is happening in Chicago, this is happening in Texas, and it's all gang related activity. And Trump just said that Venezuela is getting rid of their criminals and that makes more sense to why Venezuela closed off their borders because when those criminals make it to the border, because of the like migrant plan that uh, Kamala and Joe Biden did, it makes them, instead of sending them away, they put them on a bus and send them somewhere else, deeper into the country. And I'm like, where the f are the governors doing? Where's Joe? Where's Kamala? Like, you guys have an administration to run. Hello, wake up. And the fact that you're not seeing it on the news as much as they push all this other fake news, if this is fake, I still want to know about it because I live in Chicago. So that got cut off, but I, I guess he lives in Chicago. That's what he, it sounded like he was going to say. And this individual is right. How is it that we weren't hearing about this stuff? It only started for me. I started seeing it like on TikTok and I was like, hey, what's going on here? And then every media outlet that were reporting it, that was reporting it, it was like a, a major downplay a major downplay and I'm like, but hold on, I'm, I'm looking at video. Now I know we got AI out here and things could be doctored, but 
Okay, you got this video and then you got a plethora of videos on TikTok with people saying, I live in Aurora. This is happening. People are doing little tours to show you like all the, the, the people hanging outside. And it was like, how is all this happening and no one is saying anything? Yeah, I saw that and it's infuriating. It should never happen in this state. It should never happen in Denver. That's Mayor Mike Johnston's reaction to the many videos that continue to make headlines about Venezuelan gang violence in the Denver metro area. Obviously that video was not taking place in Denver and we are going to do everything we can to make sure it doesn't ever. In a statement, Denver police appear to indicate the same, saying they take the presence of the TDA gang seriously. While DPD says they believe there are reasons members of the gang are tied to crimes in the area, the department says they are not aware of any apartments being taken over by the group within the metro area. We're not tolerating that in Denver. We don't see any evidence of that. Denver. I find it very hard to believe that, that that has not gone into the city limits of Denver. Uh, maybe they don't have enough intel yet to specifically say that they can tie that to um, the TDA gang. James Albee, law enforcement procedural expert, says he believes city leaders are downplaying the seriousness of the problem. I think they're trying to mitigate some of the fear and concerns that the community may end up having over this gang that I think is growing more and more every day. He says the problem has already been identified, specifically in Aurora, and there should be more focus on how to address it. There is a growing criminal element in Aurora that, that, that they can't deny. And I think, again, that's why they've got the task force involved in this to try to gather intel and to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together to figure out exactly what they're doing and try to get ahead of it. So let's talk a little bit about this TDA, this Tren de Aragua. This gang, which originates out of Venezuela, is said to be on the same level as the Salvadoran gang MS-13. If you know anything about MS-13, it is a nasty, vicious, brutal gang. And what this TDA is doing is it's quietly setting up in these sleepy neighborhoods. I'm not just talking about like, your major cities like New York, Chicago, DC, that sort of thing. I'm talking about like these little quiet neighborhoods because Aurora is like a really quiet neighborhood, um, um, quiet uh, city. They're going into these areas and they're setting up base and they're just their tentacles are extending into other areas. I heard someone who is from Colorado. This was a young man dismissing all of this stuff that's happening in, in Colorado saying, oh, this is uh, blown out of proportion. He was like the the apartment complex that this took place in that they uh, reportedly took over is basically a, a ghetto spot. Um, it's a hood place. Who cares if it's a hood spot? There are still well-to-do individuals and families who are living in this apartment who probably live there because they can't afford to go anywhere else. And just because they are poor doesn't mean they should be subjected to um, being shaken down or um, having violence around them, having mothers or fathers not able to take their children outside because they're fearful of them being shot or hurt, possibly sexually assaulted, any of that stuff. So I don't care. But still, we have people in that place who cannot afford to go anywhere else. That's where they live and they want to live peacefully and they want to live in safety. So let's focus on that. In her new home, far away, the peace she feels is fleeting because for so many others, she says there is no escape, no solution, and no sign that help will ever come. My family lives in Aurora. My daughters live there. I talk to them in moving to Aurora. If someone doesn't do something now, their apartments are next. Let me read this uh, as well. Aurora Mayor Mike Kaufman called this ordeal a nightmare situation. He now admitted that the city, quote, lost control, lost control of the gang infiltration. And now he says they're aggressively working to get it back. If you had taken it seriously when people were calling in and saying, hey, we got a serious problem here. If you had taken it seriously in the beginning, you wouldn't have lost control. This gang, Tren de Aragua, operates inside prison walls spreading from Venezuela to South America and now the United States of America. They say it's brutal. This gang is a menace. It has wreaked havoc in Central and South America and now it is here. I tell you, this all reminds me of when people were not paying attention to the border crisis, when it was affecting Texas and California until, until it came on their doorstep. Until it came on their doorstep. They were not paying attention. They did not care. Y'all better wake up. Wake up. And initially they were talking about, oh, people are just playing politics. Again, that phrasing, they throw that around 
just dismissing them. Oh, it's playing politics. You're playing politics. No, you're playing politics because you're playing with people's lives. You're playing with people's lives when you ignore them because it's an election year. When you don't want it to look bad for your party. That's when you're playing, that's when you're playing politics. This is a much bigger deal than they are making it out to be. Much bigger. And they better get control of this. We honestly do not need not one more gang in this country. We have over 33,000 gangs in the United States of America. Whether they're the local street gangs or the national street gangs or prison gangs, we have enough gangs. It's time to clean this up. Whew. Anyway, you know what to do. Drop your comments down below. Let's talk. Um, what do you think is going to happen from here on out? Like I said, I'm so grateful for social media. And usually I'm very critical of social media, but um, I'm happy that a lot of people have alternatives to get their news out because we are seeing what happens when, when the, you know, the traditional news media outlets um, withhold information, downplay information. It's, it's not to our benefit. Even if it, if, it, if it turned out that it was just, oh, an isolated incident, I wanna hear about that isolated incident because someone raising a, a concern like this concerns me. It concerns me. I wanna hear your take down below. Just for those of you who are in Colorado, if you happen to be watching this and you're from Aurora, just let us know what's going on down below. Um, but those of you in other states who are watching this, are you fearful that this could be coming to your neighborhood? I certainly think that it's just a matter of time and that's not me being hyperbolic and that's not me being fear mongering or any of that stuff. I just, I've seen a pattern. I've just seen a pattern over these past few months and years that, led, uh, that leads me to believe that this is imminent in many other people's uh, cities and um, states. So just let me know if you have any fear that this is going to happen. What do you think should happen now moving forward? Like I said earlier, I honestly believe that a lot of this was downplayed because this is an election year. Colorado is a blue state. And I, I just, I, what is just mind blowing is that even in the face of all of this video evidence that so many high ranking officials would try to act stupid and ignorant and pretend as if we're the ones who are not seeing what we're seeing so that's just it's insulting to me anyway you can follow me on my blog at thisbehemingal.com and on instagram with the same name this Bahamian gal on facebook same name and on tiktok this Bahamian gal tbg also if you like videos like this be sure to watch this video next and i will see you all next time bye Mwah.